Can we talk a little linebackers real quick, though, bro? Yeah. Because I was definitely a fan of what I was seeing. Um, we started out with Cole and Alandon. Bro, Alandon, he balled. I thought that he he looked a lot faster this week than he did last week. I just love how physical he is. It does not matter the play. He is going to hit you in the face. And he's accelerating. Now, he's third best in terms of athlete, athleticism when you're talking Quan and Cole. But I just love the tone set, the tone that he plays yeah. with his demeanor. I feel like it matters on his defense. I thought Cole looked really good. He looked really comfortable in the defense in terms of the run game and in coverage. I thought for Quan continue to fly around as well. My only concern and, and Mark Robinson, yeah. he also looked good out there, man. Hits. Run game, zone coverage, the big hit on the receiver, like that, man. That's a Mark Robinson thing. Every time we see him in stadium, he has one of those type of hits where he uncoils on something, right? So I loved that with that group, man. But I just thought, like as a whole, their ability to play the run, how aggressive they are getting downhill. It is a breath of fresh air in contrast to how it's been the past couple of seasons, man. Across the board, like all four of them dudes that we just talked about, they are attacking. Now, it's not always perfect. Sometimes you're getting caught peaking, and that's been why some of those runs have spit. Like in that Bills game, it was a couple of runs where it was like, yo, he picked up 10 here, he picked up 8 here. Just a little bit of peaking. And that comes with the flow. All right, when you're starting to sub different dudes in and out, sometimes it's a nickel that has to fit. Sometimes it's a safety that has to fit. And now all the time, those dudes are fitting. So you'll watch some of them plays. The linebacker the first couple times plays it normal because he's thinking that guy's there. It spit one or two times. Now he's doing this. That's just a part. That's the human element of it. When you're out there with the same group every single time, though, you don't have to necessarily worry about that always popping up. But that's like the trust part of it. But I thought like as a whole, they look really good there. My only critique or my big concern is the tight end matchup. Right. You saw that popping Kim up K got in the Hokum game a couple times. Yes, he got Hokum a couple times. He, I'm not tripping on him matching up with Kenny Robinson, getting him because Kenny technically isn't the guy that we're thinking that's going to be out there on defense per se. Make the roster special teams cool. Defense not to that extent, so I wasn't tripping on that. But right. Cole Holcomb, he he got him a couple of times, and that's part of the concern when we talk about coverage linebackers versus those type of tight ends, that became something where if I'm just watching this or if I'm scheming up how to attack us, that was the difference because the tight end matchup is quick enough where that pass rush wasn't going to be able to really affect them, but he was so athletic that he could really put work in. And that was ultimately how they moved that one drive when they pushed it all the way down the field on us. We ended up getting the pick with uh, Elijah Riley in the end zone. Cole Holcomb tipped it. That was the one for me. And I was like, Cole looked good when we put him back in the zone. That's when he actually got the tip. Yeah. Terrible read. You're throwing in the triple coverage. But once again, make the play. It reminded me of the throw that Mitch had versus Baltimore. The the Roquan where it's like you got the underneath, like whole player outside leverage on the receiver and the safety coming in. And you trying to fit this thing over the linebacker, shallow to safety. But it, it's just like, yo, it's too much going on right there. There's not enough space. That's what it looked like. Yeah. And then Cole, great job though getting hands on it. We'll love to see him catch it. Get you get you your own one, you know? Right. Get Give your a own. free one to yeah, Riley. Yeah, you hook Riley up. Riley's like, makes Riley thank look you. even better. Riley look great. You got to turn over in the end zone. You're electric. Nose for the ball. <laughs> You're electric, you bro. Nose for the ball. <laughs> but I was like, yo, Cole, just catch it yourself, bro. But that's the difference for Cole. Zone concept, he looks good. Mark Robinson, zone concept, good. Where they can have eyes on them dudes. When it's man to man, they get a little bit that one on one coverage element. Even though they're athletic and fast, it's just different when you're talking about playing in space with those type of dudes. And we did get a chance to see that. So that still popped up to me. I do like what we did do at one point. We started putting Keanu Neal out there for a little bit, walking him down. You could definitely see the physicality. You could definitely see his aggressiveness. So I do like that we got certain things that we're going to be doing to offset some of that. But that did kind of show up to me in terms of just like one takeaway, one critique of that group right there, man. That's what I thought, too, with Holcomb. Like, yeah. outside of those one or two plays that he had with Kincaid, mm -hmm. where he got a little bit beat, I think he looks fine. I think he plays mm -hmm. the part perfectly. But... We knew that about Holcomb going in. Yeah. That's the thing. We were just like, mm -hmm. okay, he's going to be a really good run stopper for us. He's more athletic than a Robert Spillane. Yep. 
can maybe be a little bit better in coverage, but that's the knock on him. Mm-hmm. And I thought about this more and more. Let's be real, though. Like, that's probably a lot of teams' weaknesses around the league. They're inside linebackers against athletic or some of these young tight ends coming in. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. So, That's luckily, we do have a Quan Alexander. Luckily, yeah. we have a Keanu Neal that maybe we can offset that in mm-hmm. certain packages and whatnot. But that's a, that's just a mismatch. It, for the mo- I think it's going to be a mismatch for most teams around the league, or it has oh, been yeah. at least. But I think the, the, the difference is this. If we're just trying to acknowledge it and just, like, make ourselves feel, like, okay with it, then, yeah. Everybody deals with unicorns at tight ends. That's a matchup for everybody, right? But if you're talking about, do you want to win a Super Bowl? That's not the response. The response, if you're trying to win a Super Bowl, is, well, how do we address it? What well, we brought we in do Quan, fix it? Yeah. Keanu. Absolutely. Yeah, I, th- I think we do have the piece yeah. around there to offset it. Yeah, that's how I look at it. I'm like, I don't care that everybody deals with it because we're not everybody. We don't look at ourselves as we're just trying to be here or just be relevant. we trying to be the best. And that's the part where if we're critiquing and fine combing through it, it's like, all right, well, how do we offset it? And I think we got a couple of ways. Talked about Keanu. Talked about Quan. I also look at the pass rush. I think that comes up as well. But then after that, if it is a situation where just personnel-wise we don't have that, well, now that's going to fall on Terrell Austin. That's going to fall on Coach Tomlin schematically to be doing certain things, which they'll be able to do as well. But that's where they're going to be challenged. So it's not just going to be on those, you know, LBs exclusively. It's on the coaching staff, too, because you don't always have to call something where it's going to put this guy one on one with him. There's certain calls and certain things you can do to disguise certain pressures you can bring backside versus bringing it front side. If you're trying to check the coverage versus a specific player versus calling it on um, passing strength, like it's multiple things you can do to offset some of that. But like I said, that's going to be on them, on them coaches and stuff like that if it shows that it's an issue. Not everybody has athletic tight ends to that extent either. Don Kincaid is a first-round draft pick. He's supposed to look nice. He's a first-rounder. Yeah. Not everybody has that type of stuff over there right now. So it's not going to be an issue that we deal with every single game, but we just know in the AFC, all right, we're going to deal with Mark Andrews. We're going to deal with Kelsey. I was going to say Njoku, but I think he's overrated. He's just athletic. <laughs> But I do agree. <laughs> I was just thinking AFC North. Yeah. Uh, who? Else? Wait. Yeah. Bengals. Good Bengals pick. They picked up. Uh, I think Irv Smith. Yeah. Because my wrong. Because Hunter's that? gone, right? Yeah. Hunter uh, left. Yeah. AFC. I guess not too. I mean, Moose. Moose. One of those guys. Yeah, but we ain't got to play him. Huh? Right. Yeah, he would have. Yeah. So it's three of them dudes already in the division, guaranteed. Depending on how you look at Njoku. We could handle him this year. Yeah. He, he he got one on us in that Thursday night game. Mm-hmm. Did he get a touchdown on us in the last game, too? I think he might have. And Joku? I think he might have. I don't remember. He's overrated, though. It ain't going to matter. Pasher's going to get that. Yeah, and I, I like our that. linebackers a lot better this Pasher's year get than that, last man. year. Right above your head on the screen, there's a logo. I don't know if you, I don't know, if you know that, man. It's a logo. Goes by the name of DraftKings Sportsbook. You know, just the top rated sportsbook in that. You feel me? Safe, secure, dependable, reliable. Sound like I'm talking about you, low key. I'm just talking about the app, though. You know how that is, man. It's the best of the best. I only like the beer on the best of the best, D. All right? And that's what DraftKings Sportsbook is, ladies and gents. And, of course, today's show is brought to you by them. So, salute DraftKings, man, for being back on board for us this season. And with that being the case, you know if we're talking about them, baby, you know we got to have a promo code. So, if this is your first time rocking with DraftKings, download the app. All right? Then after you download said app, it's going to be time to make that first wager, Deke. All right? So when you're about to make that first wager, because you want that opportunity to make a little make a little money, yeah. you put that first. Makes the games more exciting. It does. It definitely does. So you put a little $5 down, right? Because you want to just tip. You want to put your toe in. A little minimum of five, and there's nothing wrong with that. But the secret is this, though, Deke. When you put the promo code in with the $5 bet, the promo code is MOATS. You put that in with that $5 bet, you get $200 in free DraftKings deposit bonus money 
to use for future bets as well. I mean, it's a great you concept. You just got to put five bucks in. That's it. Five bucks and most of the promo code. I'm not the smartest guy out there, but that seems like a good deal. It is pretty chill, bro. It is pretty, pretty chill. So it is, you know, a win-win. That's how I look at it, man. That's definitely how I look at it. But, Deke, I do know at times we can have a little bit too much for it, right? When you when you get these opportunities to make a little bit of that, that moolah, baby, it get a little crazy. And sometimes you might get a little out of whack. Yeah. You might even have what they call a gambling problem. Deke, you could need crisis counseling and referral services. Got to keep the priority straight. 100%. And if you live in New York, there is a specific number for you to call or even text. But for everybody else, the number you need to dial is one. 800 Gambler.